In yesterday's show, I was dealing with a portion of uh, Judges chapter 8 and moved in just briefly into Judges chapter 9. And you can look at yesterday's show on that and how Abimelech uh, comes to the people of Israel and says, uh, it is better to put hands, to, to centralize power into the hands of one man rather than decentralize power in the hands of 70. Uh, and, uh, and again, I reminded, uh, reminded you that this is the way our, our political system was developed back in the 18th century. We have moved steadily into this idea that all power should be centralized no matter where we go. Well, the, Abimelech, if you read through Judges chapter 9, I'm not going to do all of this, but I just want to center on just this portion of Judges chapter 9. We begin to see here, here the, 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 the competition uh, we, we find a new a, a contender of, uh, against Baal, and that is in one of Gideon's sons, um, and uh, who who uh, stands up against the Baalism of Abimelech. Uh, so, but anyway, um, these 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 people who go along with Abimelech, uh, who who support him because he is our relative. We're going to have. We're going to have a, an inner circle access to him, and we're going to have the same type of power. In verse 4 of Judges chapter 9, it says, And they gave him 70 pieces of silver from the house of baal Bayreath, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless fellows, and they followed him. Again, this is what happens in Washington, D.C. People get into power, and they hire worthless and reckless people. And what are they? Because most people in government, I'm not going to say in all people in government, a lot of people in government, they're there for the power. Um, and uh, many of them there are worthless and reckless. Uh, they, they don't understand economics. They don't understand the, the nature of, of a decentralized political system. Uh, and they, they wreck things. They wreck the economy. They wreck business. Uh, they wreck health care. Uh, these are worthless fellows who follow power. Now, just like Abimelech had his worthless fellows, Democrats and Republicans have their worthless fellows, and they have these worthless fellows in, in order to, to have them do their bidding so that uh, during the time of their, 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 their position in office, they end up making more money and more power down the road. Um, verse 9, Then he went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal, seventy men on one stone. Uh, this was a this was a religious sacrifice. Uh, they, you, you get rid of all the opposition. This is this is humanism in action. Now we see this with despotic uh, uh, governments all over the world. We you can go back to the history of, of the, the Herods, um, and you can see how all any competition, even within his own family, uh, a Herod uh, saw this as a threat to him. He was paranoid about it, and he ended up killing. Uh, uh, his, his, his mother-in-law and so forth. You can go through the, the, the history of the Herods and you can see this. The same thing with the Caesars. Now, we don't really kill off people here in the United States, although there's an interesting line in the Godfather saga about how um, Kay, who comes back, uh, or, 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 or I guess Michael comes back and sees Kay for the, very, for, for the time after he, he goes to, to Italy, and uh, she says that, you know, your, her, your father, is a, he, he kills people. And, and Michael said, well, he's just, you know, like, he's like any politician. And she says, well, he kills people. And, and she, she says, well, politicians don't have people killed. And then Michael says, don't be so naive. Well, today in our country, we don't kill off politicians. Uh, we just, we, we assassinate their character. And uh, we, we, we will keep in office those people who do our bidding, even though their characters are, are, are very, very flawed. I hear the Democrats keep in somebody like Barney Frank uh, and, and others. Uh, and they will, they will assassinate the character of any, any opposition. Uh, and uh, so you can see a conservative out there. Conservative does one thing wrong, and he's immediately thrown out of office. A liberal, they keep him in power because he is one of these worthless and reckless fellows. And so uh, he killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubbaal, uh, 70 men on one stone. But Jotham, uh, the youngest son of Jerubbaal, was left, for he hid himself. And so Jotham is the only one left. And, uh, and all the men of Shechem and all Beth Milo assembled together, and they went and made Abimelech king uh, by the oak of the pillar which was in Shechem. Now when they told Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim and lifted his voice and cried out. Thus he said to them, Listen to me. So, so he's up on the mountain. The people are in the valley. He's, uh, Listen to me, O men of Shechem. 
then God may listen to you. And he tells this, this story, this parable about these trees. Once the trees went forth to anoint a king over them, and they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Shall I leave my fatness with which God and men are honored and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, You come reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Shall I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, You come reign over us. But the vine said to them, Shall I leave my new wine which cheers God and men and go to wave over the trees? Finally all the trees said to the bramble, You come reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in truth you are anointing me as king over you, come and take refuge in my shade. But if not, may fire come out from the bramble and consume the cedars of Lebanon. And so this, so Jotham gets up and he tells this, this, this uh, parable here. And, and, this, and this is men. You know, somebody, please come and rule over us. Uh, we, we, we need somebody to come rule over us. And so they go to the, the most productive members of the society, and the most productive members of the society says, look, this is not the right thing to do. Uh, the, the, we, we are out here doing our bidding under God. This is what we have been called to do. We have been called uh, to work. Uh, this is what you ought to be called to do. Government isn't the solution to our problems. Giving more and more power to the state, no matter how productive the people might be, is not the answer to a nation's problems. Now, at the same time that's being said, the productive members of society can't ignore, the, can't ignore what's going on out here. That is, when there is this desire to have, to have a king rule over them, rule, rule over them like all of the nations have people ruling over them, uh, you begin to see that uh, it's, it's necessary for these people to say, wait a minute, uh, it's not enough for us to say no to this, it's for us to also get involved and to say, and to... Uh, to participate in keeping someone else from getting involved. But the people are so desperate to have somebody rule over them that they turn to the bramble. Now the bramble, as you know, is a kind of a sign of the curse. The bramble creeps along the ground. Uh, it strangles everything in its, in, in its path, uh, wraps itself around any, in, in anything. It, it, like here in the South, I think I may have used this illustration before, it's like kudzu. It ends up strangling the life of, 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 of uh, any plant life around it. We used to have it behind the, the first house we lived, and uh, when, you, when you cut it back, you could see it actually put an indentation into the pine trees and strangle those pine trees. And in the summertime, you can drive through parts of uh, the south and see the kudzu all over hillsides, and it really looks you know, pretty until you see it in the fir after the first frost and a couple of weeks later, where the, the kudzu had consumed uh, a, a whole hillside of pine trees. And of course it dries in, uh, before it greens up again and it's, it's a fire hazard and it ends up burning, uh, it, which it did in the, in the back of uh, my house, ended up uh, burning this whole area up and almost lit my, lit my fence on fire that I had just repaired here. But this is the problem that modern man faces. This is the problem that both conservatives and liberals face. Um, what God calls us to do is, protective, is, is productive living. What the state should do is to protect these, these productive members of society, not by taxing them to death, not by putting so many restrictions on them that they can't do business anymore. Uh, but there's always somebody in the shadows, there's always the bramble with the threat of power and destruction uh, who will even go up against the, 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 the mightiest and the most uh, stately trees in Israel the cedars of Lebanon to the, to the point of threatening them with fire to bring even them down. And this, I'm afraid, is what is happening in our nation today. Too many Americans, are conservatives and liberals, are trusting in the power of the state to redeem them uh, from, from things that should be taken care of on an individual and family and church level.